Namaskar and welcome to the self-development session section of today's session. As I mentioned earlier, we discussed topics and insights from Charles Duhigg's best-selling self-help book, Smarter, Faster, Better, over the past two months or so. Every Sunday, I tried to present a topic or insight from Charles Duhigg's book that I thought was relevant to our online meditation and self-development sessions. I tried to include topics that would not only help us stay mindful during work and during errands at home, um, I also tried to emphasize how these topics could help us derive, like, derive deeper meaning from things we did. Um, and after I ran out of all the topics from the book, I decided to summarize them, to sort of combine them together because I realized when I combined these topics together, they showed me insights that were not relevant when, um, when we discussed these topics in isolation. Um, today's the second part of our summary and the last part. So if you'd like to tune into the first part of this summary, you can visit our Vistara Circle pages on either Facebook or YouTube and, and uh, find the recorded session from last Sunday's event. Today, we're gonna start our discussion with what the holidays teach us about being smarter, faster, better. And this, this section of, of our summary, it's gonna loosely echo the discussion we had about Diwali about a month ago during Diwali, which is uh, the Hindu festival of lights. Uh, but today we're gonna also discuss that in light of Christmas and Hanukkah, because these are the other two popular holidays coming up. So apart from discussing what these holidays teach us, you know, about being better, faster, we're also gonna discuss what these holidays teach us about being wiser and slower and how these holidays show us that we're enough just the way we are. Along with talking about the holidays, we're also gonna discuss decorations and what decorations teach us about decision-making. Along with decorations, we'll also discuss darkness and what darkness teaches us about innovation. And speaking about darkness, I'd like to quickly call out this image on my right which I found on one of my favorite photographers' Instagram pages. His, his name's Dave DeSello. So if you'd like to, you can, you can check out his work. I think it's really inspiring. And um, he always posts, posts images that are about current events. So now he's posting a lot of pictures about holidays, about the holiday lights. So I love this picture that he's taken in Pittsburgh, right? These buildings have the holiday lights and there's darkness behind, and then there's the crescent moon that we can very clearly see how it's partially lit. So I love that photo. And I decided to include a lot of his pictures in, in this deck today. Let's talk about holidays. We spoke about Diwali. Um, we spoke about the five days of significance um, during Diwali. First day is Dan Teras. Dan means wealth and how on this day, we acknowledge and celebrate our wealth and not just monetary wealth, but also our health, right? Which is a big wealth of us, right? If we don't have good health, we're not gonna be able to do things we like. So apart from, apart from our well-being, apart from our wealth, this is also a day when we celebrate and pray places of work and instruments of trade because it is because of these entities that we can actually stay wealthy and stay prosperous, right? Um, second day of Diwali is Narak Chaturdashi. So Narak means hell. And this is a day when we celebrate our ancestors. We pray to the heavens and the hell. And we not only pray our biological ancestors, we also pray to everybody who's existed before us because we acknowledge the fact that it is all of these people together that created the world that we live in right now. The, and it's because of these people's hard work is that we can exist in this very moment together. Um, days three and four are both 
tailored towards acknowledging and honoring our support systems. Third day is called Bhau Bij. Bhau means brother, and this is a day uh, for siblings. So this is a day when siblings celebrate each other, sisters thank their brothers for their support and their help. And it's not just siblings, but also friends. Friends thank each other for their support and for their company through, their, through this journey of life. Um, the second day in, in celebra celebrating our support systems is the day of Padua. This is a day when married couples, they celebrate each other. They acknowledge how important of a vital support system they are for each other. And on this day, um, they celebrate each other's differences, physiological differences, psychological differences, spiritual differences, and they consider each other as a metaphor for the universe. Um, in Hindu scriptures, the universe is considered dual, just like with a lot of other school of, schools of thought. The Hindu scriptures say that the universe is dual and one part is the male, other one's the female, and it's not, it's not tied to our physical genders, but then in this male and female parts of the universe, there's, there's, there are many differences. There's lots of diversity. So on this day, husbands and wives, they in a way consider each other as manifestations of this cosmic diversity, and they decide to celebrate that. And the last day of Diwali, which I think is the most important, is Lakshmi Puja. Lakshmi is the name of a goddess. She's the goddess of prosperity. So, and Puja is pray. So you pray to Lakshmi, thank her for all the prosperity. And the best way to do that is by celebrating each other. So this is the day when you invite friends, family into your homes for a feast and you also visit them, you exchange gifts. Now, I grew up in India, so India is a pretty diverse place. So I used to celebrate Christmas every year. And after I moved to the United States a few years ago, I also got to speak to friends who also celebrated Hanukkah. So after, after talking to my friends who celebrated Hanukkah, after you know, reflecting back on my own experiences of Diwali and on, of Christmas, I realized holidays like Hanukkah, they also celebrate the same things. They also acknowledge and celebrate the same aspects of existence of, you know, Hanukkah, of, you know, you take this day to celebrate and appreciate everything we have. And it's not just, you know, important things, but also realizing and appreciating little miracles of life. Right? During Hanukkah, you also appreciate, thank your ancestors, right? You take time to, to acknowledge, to celebrate everybody around you. you. You spend time with your family, with your friends. And it's the same deal for Christmas too, right? I was going to say a little bit about Hanukkah, Purva, because I'm, uh, I'm Jewish. I can, I can talk a little bit more about that of... Um, uh, when I was helping Apoorva put this together, and the reason that I mentioned about the miracles is because for, for people who don't know, Hanukkah does two things. It number it, one, it celebrates that this little bit of oil lasted for eight days in this temple, and it was only supposed to last for one. So it's a miracle, and it's recognizing that period of a miracle, but also seeing how we still have miracles in our every day. But the other thing that Hanukkah does is it's actually a celebration of a war battle as well, of this small group of people who stood up to this oppressive force and they won. So that's the other significance of Hanukkah. And that's why I said that it's, um, we're recognizing and appreciating everyone who contributed towards getting here like our ancestors, because, you know, for the Jews, the ancestors who fought against this oppressive force meant that the people today now get to live the lives that they have. But of course, it's also a holiday where you are thankful and appreciative of your friends and your relatives and you celebrate together and you appreciate what you have and it's a gift giving. So it's, it's all of those things too. Um, I just wanted to, you know, since Apoorva is Indian and I'm Jewish, <laughs> I think I could talk a little bit specifically about the holiday. So yeah, that's it. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that, Radha. Um, I also think like this in, in all of these holidays is a nice time for 
you know, to celebrate with those that we love and care about, but we also take time to acknowledge and thank each other, right, for, for their contribution in our existence. And I think when we start acknowledging and when we thank each thank our, let's say, our family members or our friends or our colleagues for the role that they play in our lives. Uh, I feel like we sort of open ourselves up to, to receive their help, to acknowledge it. And from this point onwards, I feel like we are slightly bit more open to receiving the love, care, affection, and also help of those around us. Um, so I think that is also a pretty significant effect of the holidays that they have on us. Um, and I think something else that these three holidays that I guess Radha already mentioned that they share, that is a pretty important aspect of them, is the gifts. And because gifts are supposed to be a surprise, I didn't include them in the agenda. Um, but before we actually look at what these gifts are, I'd like to talk about the two kinds of gifts, two, two general kinds of gifts. One kind of gifts, gift is the tangible variety. So tangible gifts are those that we can touch wrapped in nice paper. Um, if it's a food item, it's gonna get eaten and it's gonna disappear. Let's say if it's flowers, uh, after a few days, they're gonna wither and then disappear. But the other variety of gifts, which is the intangible variety, I think these can't be seen or touched or wrapped in a nice paper, but they can definitely be felt. And I think when we give or take the tangible variety, I think these intangible gifts are what we actually experience. And these are the ones that actually stay with us after. So one of these intangible um, gifts that I think these holidays give us or leave us with is the realization, like, uh, like I guess already I said, is that we're not alone. And this is the same slide we had during our, uh, during our discussion of Diwali. Right? And it's this same feeling of knowing that we're not alone and knowing that there are more people, there are other people who are invested in our well-being, in our success, more than we had recognized. And um, again, as, as I guess I already said, this is a very humbling, this is a very humbling realization. And, and this feeling that we get when somebody, you know, maybe we work with every day, we, that we never get, got, a real, got a real chance to talk to, they greet us or they just, you know, they just message us saying happy holidays. That makes us realize, oh, there was actually, you know, a person who was mindful of my existence because of this everyday rut. They never got a chance to really talk to me, but today they took the time, took the time and maybe say it to me in, in my meeting or just write it to me in the chat at work. So this, this realization I think is immense and this is what stays with us after the holidays. And even if somebody might necessarily not give us a gift, this little realization that, hey, I acknowledge you and you're not in this alone, I think is to me, one of the biggest intangible takeaways or gifts of the, the holiday season. I think the second pretty important intangible gift of the holidays is the gift of giving. So again, as, as we said, during, the, during these holidays, we might wrap a present for somebody and give it to them. Um, or we might maybe write a card, write an email, maybe, or maybe just send a text message to somebody, right? Or we might be somebody who's, who's on the receiving end. We might receive these gifts or these greetings. And at that moment, we might realize, oh, hey, there's somebody else I need to also send these gifts to, right? And, and when we receive something, it makes us feel nice. But when we when we share this gift or this greeting to somebody, um, I think it makes us feel nicer, right? We all like to see happiness, smiles on the faces of people around us. And knowing that we are in some way, the reason behind this happiness and this smile, I think is much bigger than the, than the happiness we might feel when we receive something. Though it's nice to receive something and know that somebody cares for you. So I think the holidays, they present us with this opportunity of being able to give somebody something. And, one, and when we realize how nice it feels to, to give something and to receive it, we might, re we might decide, hey, I'm not going to wait for the holidays to give something. And I don't have to give something, something that can be wrapped. I can just give something good wishes or give them a greeting. And it can be on any day and not just the holidays. So I think this gift of 
giving or this gift of being able to be generous is is immense and this is what the holidays give us the the third intangible gift that the holidays give us is the realization that darkness is just an opportunity to spread light right again diwali is the festival of lights but this also is true with hanukkah radha you want to say something about this this point this for it um so one of the things that we say during hanukkah when we're reading like what the meaning is for each of the candles is one of them is that as one candle may kindle many others um be like that's that's what the holiday is about of making this one candle to kindle many others and can and spreading light like hanukkah is the sort of a festival of lights i mean it's like fundamentally about about lights because it's the the candles with the oil lasting 8 days it's it's all about that light it's a very light filled holiday like similar to diwali that same spirit of one candle kindling many others and spreading that that i keep saying light over and over again <laughs> but, but you know that's what it is yeah so yeah <laughs> and it never loses its own light right like when a candle lights another candle it it doesn't reduce the the light that it has exactly. within it it only exactly. multiplies it and right. i guess that is what these holidays teach us right like even yep. as people we make somebody smile it doesn't reduce the amount of smiles that i have it only makes me feel even happier okay so we've, we've spoken about the holidays and the gifts um so i think about these holidays as sort of these moments of pause you know in in our lives in our daily lives so if our if our life was a book holidays i think are kind of like bookmarks and just by the nature of them they're cyclical they occur every year right at certain other holidays like a saturday might occur every week right but strictly speaking about these holidays about hanukkah about christmas about diwali they're they're cyclical and i think they're like situated in a pretty opportune point on on the yearly calendar they take place um during this this time of the year when it's cold when it's dark especially if you live in places like north america it gets dark at 4 pm and it's very very cold right and but then you realize that wow like these lights these celebrations these positive greetings these positive vibrations that everybody is sharing they make me feel so much better like they they make they almost make all of this darkness this this coldness worth it right and at this very point very moment if you once you start enjoying this this whole celebration of the holidays you realize oh it's going to go away and i'm soon going to go back to reality i'm going to go back to work and i guess just like the winter summer is not going to last forever either so instead of me being attached to the holidays to the celebrations or to the coldness of summer or the warmth of i mean sorry coldness of winter and the warmth of summer i need to actually just learn how to make the most of these changing periods of stages of every year of of life so and and embrace the transitions right and doesn't matter if you're a person who's who's nostalgic or romantic or if you're somebody who's who loves to stay in the present and not think much about the past or or the future i think these holidays in some way make us reflect they make us reflect back to the holidays we've had in the past back maybe back to the times of our childhood and they might remind remind us of of moments during these holidays that have stayed with us forever right and in some way these moments they might have had a lasting impact on us they might have changed us um fundamentally like they might have changed the kind of person we are right so and if if we actually like the change we might decide to make that uh, to make that moment sort of a tradition so we might want to we might want to bring in a similar a similar experience to those that celebrate this holiday in the future right so we want to we might want to impact the holidays in the future the generations to come and that i think is like the reflective aspect of these holidays they they make us you know willing willfully or not they make us look back and they also make us look ahead and lastly but very importantly these holidays i think are so comforting right we're we're humans 
just like we need each other, we also need sustenance, we need comfort. So we wanna comfort ourselves. We wanna be, be, be amongst people we like. We wanna eat nutritional things, delicious things, do things we like. So I think a very important thing, a very important aspect of these holidays is that they make us realize of this very human need of wanting to comfort, but also of wanting of wanting to be comfortable, but also of wanting to comfort those we care for. Um, and again, just, you know, we might realize that, okay, it's the holidays, so I'm gonna give somebody a gift, but I don't have to wait for the holidays to feel generous like this. I might, you know, not give a gift, but maybe I might give a greeting or a, or a wish to somebody any other day. And similarly, I might comfort somebody any other day too, because I kind of like how it makes me feel. So that's just, you know, a few thoughts that I, had about, about holidays. So enough talking about holidays and gifts, let me quickly talk about decorations and how they help us and what they can teach us about decision-making. Decorations, they're pretty intricate. They're multifaceted, right? In a way, they're an investment because in an investment in time and money and they have an effect, right? They have an effect on us and on those that witness these decorations. And I think the, the way we gauge decorations you know, the way we judge them by being nice or not so nice is by falling back on our own experiences. We might like a certain decoration based on something that we experienced in the past, right? And I think that's pretty similar to how we make decisions in general, right? Decisions are detailed, they're an investment, and we usually use our past experiences on making decisions. And sometimes we might, we might face ourselves, we might be faced with a decision that we have no experience in. We might be faced with an opportunity or, or a situation that we have no experience with. So instead of lamenting the fact that we don't know enough about this, Charles Dewey in his book, he tells us that it's important to be open and to realize that if you don't have experience, now is the time when you're actually gonna create a rich experience for yourself in the future. So be open, right? And if you, and if you do have experience on something, don't get caught up with it. Take a step back and see how that how that decision or how that ornament, if we're talking about decorations, how they fit in your whole tapestry of your, of your decorations. A few more things about decisions. Um, author shares very rightly so. Not making a decision is also a decision, right? He shares some of the, some of the popular reasons for not making a decision is we might feel like we don't know enough or we might feel sort of pessimistic about choosing something. We might feel like, oh, if I choose it, it either is not gonna like turn out right for me. So, so the author tells us, you don't need to get feel anxious about whether something's gonna work out for you or not. You just need to you know, be able to take a step back, look at your decisions in the past and sort of gauge, hey, did it work out for me well in the end when I made that decision? And if it did then, I think it's likely it's gonna make me feel good now. Or if something that I chose actually worked out in the past, there's a good chance it's likely that it's gonna work out now. So let me choose that based in terms of chances based on past, past experiences rather than anxiety of what's gonna happen in the future once I make that decision. Let's talk about darkness and about what that teaches us about innovation. So in our, in our conversation about innovation a few weeks ago, we spoke about creative desperation. This, this sort of, this feeling of, of, of desperation that we experience when we're faced with an obstacle. And very often this obstacle might actually present itself as an opportunity for us to innovate, right? But the author has a word for people who embrace this obstacle and let it, let, let them innovate. The author calls such people as as innovation brokers. And the author says there are two types of innovation brokers. One type is the one that, you know, is successful in making innovations, the other ones not. And the only thing that separates between both of both these types of innovation brokers is the successful variety is able to use the obstacles and their own experiences to spark innovation. But this successful variety is the one that's able to step back from their own ideas and not get attached to them. 
because it is only when we step back from our ideas can we actually critique them, engage them, if they're actually going to pan out for our advantage in the future. So apart from embracing our obstacles, embracing our creative desperation, which to me sounds like the darkness and the light, right? So apart from embracing both of these and using our own experiences to generate innovation, the author shares it's important to not be attached to our own ideas because it is only when we're not attached is can we actually, without biases, critique our ideas and let them either develop into that one final idea or we can let ourselves work on another parallel idea if the first one wasn't that great in the first place. So in summary, just like this picture on the right, um, right, like all of these, like both of these conversations about innovation, about decision-making, I think the author sort of keeps echoing back the importance of taking a step back of valuing our own experiences, of staying open to newer ones, right? Um, author also reminds us to embrace whatever obstructions we might feel. And lastly, what the holidays teach us, I think, are is that we're enough. We're enough the way we are. And from that point onwards, we can choose whatever we wanna do with our lives and with those around us, knowing that we're enough knowing that there is no light or, no, or, or darkness. Like darkness is just an opportunity for us to spread light, but without the darkness, the lights wouldn't look as pretty as they do. With that said, I'd like to thank you for listening to us um, to our summary of Smarter, Faster, Better. I'd like to know from you about about decorations and lights, you know, in your in your holidays or in your book of life. Um, I know we're running low on sharing. time. Yeah. Just to just to quickly say, I, I think you did a great job of summarizing all of that, and I just want to thank you for the time that you've put in, and. Um, I just noticed how true that is if I put some decorations around my apartment and it, you know, it, it does mirror the decision-making. I have to step back. Okay. How does that look? Do I like how that looks there? I don't know. Maybe it'd be better over here. Like last year I put it in this place and it kind of works, but it, you know, but maybe it would work better in this place over there. And when you're just so right of, there is a lot of parallels <laughs> with decorating <laughs> decision-making. So just wanted to mention that. Thank you.